I'm going to talk about a new algorithm for data feeding today. And this is going to be a joint talk. I'm a mathematician. And Mustafa Atisi is a computer scientist. Uh, we work with two other people on this uh, project. One uh, medical doctor, uh, Dr. Dana Marshall from Meharry Medical College in Nashville, Tennessee. And we also work with one high school student uh, who was a student in academy and taking all the uh, university level courses instead of high school level courses. Um, so I looked at the math part of the project, and Mustafa looked at the computer part of it, which is about using and writing programming in Mathematica. A student helped us for, uh, with the running of the codes, uh, because we have uh, large data. Not as large as you think. We, have, we, we work with uh, mass data. And uh, we also collaborated with medical doctor, and we asked her, what are we doing? How uh, our work will help you in your research as well as uh, in your area dealing with uh, you know, people. Um, so first, I'd like to start with some introduction to uh, mathematics part of the problem. Uh, so this is about discrete fractional calculus. Uh, it is a new area in mathematics. Uh, the first p paper published in 1970s, then there was a gap. Uh, after then, uh, in 2006, uh, we published a paper. So between 1970 and 2006, there was not much papers published about discrete fractional calculus and discrete fractional modeling. So I will talk about uh, preliminaries uh, of uh, discrete fractional calculus first. And I'm, I'm going to introduce you uh, fractional exponential functions. You probably heard about mittag leflar function. And we have a discrete version of mittag leflar function in discrete fractional calculus. I am going to focus on Gombert's curves. Uh, Gombert's curves fits very well with uh, cancer, cancer or uh, tumor growth models. So uh, we are going to use Gombert's curves uh, for data feeding. I'm going to introduce you discrete fractional Gombert's equation again, uh, first time, uh, because the theory is new. Uh, discrete version is new. So Mathematica doesn't know how to solve it. So we need something else. Uh, a new method for parameter estimations uh, for data feeding. And then I'm going to discuss how good uh, the fit uh, we are doing in our research. OK, let's start with just a few basic things about the fractional calculus. Uh, I'm not sure how many of us are mathematicians, but um, most of us probably using mathematics. Uh, derivatives and integrals, we use uh, integer orders. Like we are talking about first order derivative, second order derivative. And integrals, just single integral, double integrals, but the order is one. Uh, for fractional calculus, we are talking about half order derivative pi order derivative, uh, e order integral. So this is what uh, fractional calculus is about. And there, then there is a discrete version of it. For discrete calculus, we have some operators and we have uh, difference operators. So we have, uh, you know, we, so far we talked about first order difference equations second order difference equations. But after discrete fractional calculus, now we have half order difference equations, eight ordered order difference equations. So we are fractionalizing the order of equations. The, there is a little history. Uh, we believe, we mathematicians believe that fractional calculus was born in nine, uh, 1695 uh, when um, Leibniz and L'Hopital were exchanging ideas about the notation for and derivative. 
And um, Lupita uh, asked Leibniz, what if n is one, one over two? And then um, Leibniz replied to him saying that this is an apparent paradox from which one day useful consequences will be drawn. So this is the day that we, bo uh, we believe that the fractional calculus born. There are, that, you know, there have been many mathematicians worked in this area. They tried to uh, define it, and they were very successful. Uh, some of them are, uh, as I listed here, Riemann, Louisville, Freuer, Lagrange, Euler, uh, so many mathematicians. And there are three main uh, directions of this fractional calculus. One uh, direction is, is done by Riemann, Louisville, and in my research, I also follow the Riemann, Louisville direction, how they define, I'm gonna show you. And then the second one is Capita, and the third one is uh, Grunwald Lednikov. Recently, so many research going on in fractional calculus as well as discrete fractional calculus. Mathematicians are uh, also defining new ways of uh, generalizing this integer order, derivatives, integer order, integrals. So too much research is going on, but these are the three main directions. Uh, we start with gamma function because gamma plays an important role when we define fractional order derivatives as well as fractional order difference equations or difference operator. So we have this first kind improper integral as gamma function and we have this graph and uh, 10, 15 minutes ago we also uh, saw the three-dimensional version of this uh, graph uh, by the main speaker. Uh, showed us. Um, what we are interested in is the time positive. So uh, it has the convex property, and we are not worrying about the left-hand left side of the x-axis, because we are going to model the growth curves uh, or uh, tumor growths. So we need to just look at the uh, positive x-axis for this graph. It satisfies the functional difference equation. And uh, as we know, it's the generalization of factorial function. So gamma n is n minus 1 factorial. There are many books in fractional differential equations. And I like to point out one of them, Fractional Differential Equations by Podolomny. This book uh, was written 1999. And it has many applications. First, it explains how to work with fractional differential equations, and then there are many examples given in physics, given in economics, given in other uh, areas. So I'm going to show you two ways to define a fractional difference operator. Let's start with the NABLA operator. NABLA is a backward operator, difference operator. So NABLA f of t is f of t minus f of t minus 1. So if you know, uh, you know the value of the function right now, take the difference between the value of the function at the previous point to get the nabla of f. It is kind of slope, but not exactly, because this, we are using the discrete data here. Uh, when we work with nabla operator, when we work with discrete calculus, we don't use the polynomials of uh, real uh, calculus. That's what I should say, uh, or continuous calculus. So instead of uh, polynomials uh, like t to the t square, t cube, uh, we use t to the r rising powers. So they are defined with the gamma function. So t to the r rising is gamma t plus r over gamma of t. What does this do? You know, when we take the derivative of t square, it is 2t, isn't it? Derivative comes down, subtract 1 from the derivative. Noble operator does the same thing for, to the, for the t to the r rising power. So if I have t to the alpha rising, alpha comes down, subtract 1 from the uh, power. That's what the Nabla is doing for this uh, term. 
or for this uh, single polynomial, I, sh I should say, mo monomial. Then I like to compare t to the alpha b uh, with t to the alpha bar, t to the alpha rising. So we also got this with Mathematica that, um, you know, Mathematica has gamma function. So you can see how they are close to each other when uh, alpha is uh, close to one. Now exponential function, there is a generalization of exponential function in mathematics. Uh, this exponential function generalized by Mittag Leffler, uh, French mathematician in 1903. And uh, later, Ravi Agarwal, mathematician, recent mathematician, uh, uh, he generalized this for two parameters with alpha and beta. So if you replace this alpha and beta with one, alpha is one, beta is one, then we are getting e to x. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is this, I'm gonna replace Oh, let me tell you about the discrete mittag leffler function. Uh, in uh, two, 2011, I worked with uh, Paul Elo. Uh, he is at uh, University of Dayton, Ohio. And we had a series of uh, papers together in the, uh, about the base, uh, basics of discrete fractional calculus. So we, at one time, we were able to see what the generalization of uh, mittag leffler function for discrete case, so here it is. But I can show you what this does. Um, so for the discrete calculus, one plus a to t is the exponential function. So this exponential function generalized as one plus a to t, which corresponds to e to a t. So it is a discrete version of e to a t. All right, Gombarsko. The first one is, every calculus book has it. The first one, it is known as uh, Gombarts curve. And the second one is the discrete version. We wrote the discrete, we introduced the discrete version. What we did here, e to minus c there, we replaced with the discrete uh, you know, exponential function. And then continuous fractional, we replace e to minus ct with the mittag leffler function. And we replaced uh, the discrete mit, uh, exponential function with the discrete fractional mittag leffler function. So then we ask ourselves, if we replace all this with the new functions, what do we get? So we, we looked at the parameter estimations. And of course, we use Mathematica, and we work with four graduate students. Uh, Gombert's curve is only one. We also work with Weibull, Richards, and logistic curves for uh, data feeding. And at that time, we were uh, collaborating with one uh, another medical doctor. And we used 17. Uh, we used the data which was um, co collected from the mice who did not receive any uh, treatment. And each data includes 17 day, data points because data was uh, collected for 17 days. And we published our papers uh, in this progress in fractional differential equations and applications, differentiation and applications. So William Rushkirsky is the one that who gave us uh, the data and we work with uh, statistician in this work, in this paper. Now, when we get the new data from uh, Dana Marshall, uh, we put all the data in a XY coordinate system. These are discrete, by the way. These are a collection of dots. We just co uh, combine them and uh, make the line graph. That's what we call. Now, for this um, new data, we use the delta operator. Delta operator is another difference operator. It, is, it can be considered as approximation operator for slope, where the case limit h for the limit h is 1, or delta x when you call it, delta x is 1. For 
When we work with that operator, then we use t to the r following functions. These are the polynomials again. If you want to go with the that operator, these are the uh, t to the r uh, following functions represents polynomials. Single term of a polynomial, again monomial. So that when you apply the that operator, derivative comes down, subtract one from the derivative. And here is the fractional sum operator. And you know, I just want to move on because uh, let me just tell you that uh, for the Riemann Louisville fractional difference operator, here is how we do define. For example, if you have 1 over 2 here, what you need to do is rewrite 1 over 2 as 1 minus 1 half, which gives you 1 over 2. But then uh, you take this m out as delta m. So this is going to be delta of minus 1 half or 1 half power of the f means um, 1 half uh, sum operator, 1 half order sum operator. Anyway, for the new data, let me show you. We work with the slopes. So uh, if, you do, if the data is given, you can calculate the slope. So this is the, the one that what you do is you take the difference between any two consecutive points to get this line graph. But then for the fractionals, all the colorful you know, other dots there corresponds to fractional cases. So for example, uh, we just want to know how the fractional gets closer or gets away from the, uh, you know, the, the slope, which is the difference uh, between two data items. If you are not familiar with the Gombert's differential equation, here it is. What you need to do is you divide each side by y of t. You do this substitution, and you get this linear differential equation. And it is very easy to solve this linear equation. Once you solve it, you put it back, your substitution, and you obtain the Gombert's curve. Here is what we did in our research. We replaced the first order derivative. Let me go back. Yeah, the, the beginning, the, the first line. We replaced the first order derivative by fractional order difference operator. So here it is. But the interesting thing in this modeling is uh, this new is between we, what we expect as a mathematician, you know, I expect to see nu is between 0 and 1. That's not the case. Nu uh, is between 0 and 1.5. So we are going a little bit above 1. Uh, so this could be considered first order, second order at, together at the same time. We don't know how to solve this equation. We cannot use Mathematica to, to, to get the data fitting. Because ma what Mathematica does, it, it uses an al algorithm to approximate the differential equation if your equation is nonlinear. Then uh, using the ML algorithm to, uh, to give you the fit for the uh, given data. So since we cannot use the search for the other methods, there are other methods. But the one which fits for our case is partial sum method. And we calculate RSS. You know, for our model, it does really good job. We wrote the discrete case. Improvement is 93.85%. And for the comparison with the discrete and discrete fractional, discrete fractional gives us 40% uh, improvement. And we also looked at the statistics of what we are doing in terms of feeding. We looked at SE value and R square. Uh, SE and R square is higher, is the result is better. And we got both as higher for the discrete case and uh, fra discrete fractional case. So we start with the claim that this model does better job, and it does. Uh, the statistic shows that it does a very good job in terms of feeding. So now Mustafa's turn to finish up this talk. 
Okay. Uh, now she talked about this uh, this method here. And where is that? And she simply called it ML. That's that's the method there to solve such an equation. Uh, I don't know, Marquette Levenberg. That's an algorithm to solve such a such an equation. Is that right? If there is no solution for the equation, so you find some ap approximation. In that algorithm, what they did, they divide the data in two pieces, given data in two pieces, uh, form the equation to find the to find approximation. And then we were working on that, and then um, and and here what we did, okay, why we are dividing data in two pieces, let's say that L is our data, and rather than dividing L in a half, I start looking all possible division, starting from index two. And then we search through uh, and then form the equation among those, uh, among those uh, whichever is giving the, the best solution, in fact, in this data, we find that half is not giving the best solution. So that's what we did here. We find those um, indexes running from two, that means starting from the second item in the array, all the way to the, the length minus two, and we form the slope and everything, and then solve, find the solution for AB, and then determine the, what is the um, the best uh, solution, best data fitting. And then if you, if you look at that, maybe I can show you here, and, uh, and we have that, we have those data here. Um, this is the, this is the this, uh, experiment that the high school student did for all the, the data that we had. So come on, a little bit faster. Uh, okay, here it is. So if you look at this example, and all the way down here, see that? Um, the, the best uh, value is that the index is 0, 0, 0 0.0045. The first index, which is 2, that means uh, not really the, the division in half is the best solution. Um, the first index, index two, is the best solution. Okay, so so this approach is a little bit better than than ML approach. And if you look at the if you look at the the other cases, all the discrete cases, and here, and you will see that well, the index nine is the better. Now, if you look at the nine, our data is like we have sixteen, seventeen, something like that. So nine is what a little bit over the half. So that's the that's better solution than the ha dividing by half, okay? So that was for the discrete cases, and we have um, fractional also here cases. In that case, the only thing is that the different is the calculation of slope, okay? Um, if I go to here, how do I go that as well? Um, and this is let's go to so this is the uh, this is the um, discrete uh, fractional cases here slope calculation is is different than the previous one the all, all the uh, main idea is uh, is different and then of course here because of that alpha ranging from zero to one point five we had to have two loops there to check all possible cases among them pick the minimum one, okay? So again, the main idea here is that index is, is, is not dividing the, the input in two half, but looking all possible division and then finding the best possible solution among that. That's, that was the, our improvement, and um, I don't know, maybe this can be generalized in mathematics and, and then introduced as a new you know, algorithm to do for um, data that uh, you cannot have the, the actual solution but find some kind of approximation. Such an algorithm does not exist in, uh, in Mathematica now. I think um, this, is, this is what I, my part was uh, implementing those algorithms and then and testing the result.